The sanctions, for example, are not, you know, visible violence, but they do have uh, the same amount of hurt as a bomb. As many people can die from a bomb as they could do from sanctions. I have been uh, serving as a diplomat since 2010, but I worked with, uh, in politics and, and foreign relations since 2005. I've been witness to a process of transformation in my country uh, during the last 20 years that I think, uh, you know, that when I was growing up, I didn't think I would see. We grew up in a moment where neoliberalism was expanding over Venezuela, it was being implemented, and what you had, the result was not a better life, but rather, you know, growing inequality, growing poverty. Our parents didn't know if our future was going to be better than their lives had been. I was actually uh, charged the affairs at uh, the embassy in the United States. The time I served in the United States was also a very difficult time because it was uh, right when uh, President Trump was elected for office. You know, the moment of the biggest aggression against Venezuela started taking place. The Venezuelan people are starving and their country is collapsing. This situation is completely unacceptable and we cannot stand by and watch. So it's difficult to be a diplomat in a place that is closing doors, that doesn't believe in diplomacy, that doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't want to uh, recognize uh, your presence. Even meetings, for example, they will call meetings for different diplomats of Latin America, and sometimes we will be excluded by being in Venezuela. Or then you see that some group of countries would not want to join us because they were afraid that you know, having a close relationship with Venezuela would get them in trouble with uh, the United States. So, so uh, it was a difficult time, but I think, uh, you know, we've learned from that experience as well. And, and all those elements added together help us have a, you know, a better view of, of the world and develop better capabilities to address uh, the challenges. It's important because in diplomacy, you know, the key factor is that you're able to talk and that you're able to uh, meet with people. When that, those things start closing out, we left uh, a moment where Venezuelan diplomacy was subjected to other countries' interests. Now, it was also difficult because the idea or the image that was being sold about Venezuela as a country that was um, violating human rights or, you know, doing all these things that, that the United States criticized. Venezuela has been doing a very important political project what we call a revolution, the revolution of inclusion, of social transformation. And because that somehow goes against the um, intended purposes of uh, interest in the United States, the interest they had on, on, on over Venezuela, then uh, the result is that there's a media campaign against uh, what we're doing. They try to uh, hide our achievements. They try to portray Venezuela as a country that doesn't represent, uh, you know, uh, the values, or the democratic values, uh, that at least that they uh, promote. And people will find out that Venezuela has a very different story to tell. The same in in of the United States. La BBC de Londres ha vuelto una cosa terrible, horrible. It's very tough that you, you have to come and you know, they, it places you on the defensive. You're not being uh, defensive on an even level, you're being defensive on a narrative that was already built against you and that you have you know, no chance to uh, explain. So if you're talking uh, with somebody, you have to spend twice as so much time first trying to erase the view that they have because it's inaccurate, and then trying to explain what really happened. It's an added level of difficulty in, in doing our job as diplomats. Historically, uh, Venezuela would know about other countries through the eyes of the United States, through the eyes of Europe, and not through our own eyes. Western media has also um, somehow try to hide uh, the achievements of China, or even because we look at China through the eyes of other people. Then we can come here and see China with our own eyes and then realize, you know, there's a lot of uh, many interesting things, many rich things that, that we can learn from Chinese society, even that we can be inspired by. I think the achievements, especially, you know, the alleviation of poverty that, uh, that has been remarkable in China, over 700 million people leaving uh, poverty is amazing and is something that I think we want to learn about. 
Well, you see, the history of imperialism in this, in this region of Latin America is over 200 years old. Uh, this year, exactly, uh, marks the 200th anniversary of the Monroe Doctrine. And that's when the United States says that the whole American continent was close to uh, foreign intervention. But it, what they really meant was that, not that it was close to foreign intervention, but it was, it was only open to U.S. intervention. And historically, the U.S. has seen uh, all of Latin America, not only Venezuela, but all of Latin America as some sort of you know, property of it. It has the right to determine, you know, uh, what goes on and what doesn't and, and who we relate with and so forth. So that history uh, has damaged our possibilities of better development because it's a constant presence. Uh, you know, it's, it's a constant attack. In some countries, it has been violent, uh, you know, coup d'etats, invasions, uh, you know, governments overthrown, people disappear, people successions of, of, of parts of, of country, you know, this, this has been a history uh, that we have seen that has been very violent. Nowadays, uh, you know, the, that violence is not so visible because they do it in other ways that are more subtle. The sanctions, for example, are not, you know, visible violence, but they do have uh, the same amount of hurt as a bomb. As many people can die from a bomb as they could do from sanctions. The Venezuelan economy has been hurt significantly because of the illegal U.S. sanctions. If you look about the income that the country has not able to receive because of the sanctions, since 2015, we have probably lost somewhere around $232 billion in revenue for the country. There are some studies that you may uh, see that have been done even by independent uh, uh, researchers in the United States. And they say that, you know, maybe the, the first year of the sanctions under the Trump administration, they say that they might have been amounted to about 40,000 deaths because of the impact on the health system. And that number, maybe it's even uh, bigger, large, it's hard to actually measure. But there has been significant damage, not only to the economy, but also to everyday life in the sense that not being able, for example, to import a spare parts, uh, things to repair the waterworks or the electricity, you know, ha somehow af affects uh, people's daily lives. So the way to confront this uh, is, uh, is strengthening our own system, is strengthening our own convictions and our own, uh, and not giving up to them. Some countries during these 200 years have made the mistake of trying to not assert their own ideas, trying to go the path of imperialism to see if you know things improve, and they don't. And they'll never improve because they're not going to follow our interests, they're following somebody else's interests. So I think the best uh, confrontation method is to reassert our interests, to reassert our, our commitment to people's dignity and to make sure that you know, we do everything we can in, with our resources and with uh, the tools that we have to maintain our position and be firm because only when you confront them is that, you know, they, they really have to back off. Mm -hmm.